streets. So the only people that would see that dance was the people in their neighborhood. And the whole reason that they kept their dance moves secret was because they didn't want another crew to copy them. And so all of a sudden, this group is in Hollywood and their dance moves are everywhere and everyone wanted to break dance. This is a quote from the book Through My Windows, The History Behind Holy Hip Hop by Sid Chemist, who is my favourite rapper of all time. And he said, I didn't fully accept Christianity because I did not like the picture of the white Jesus and the racist stories that followed. I can remember feeling angry towards the white man after watching Roots and studying the history and philosophy of the Black Panther Party for self-defense. Honestly, I wasn't really feeling white people as a whole, although I was around them every day. When the missionaries came to Africa, they had a Bible and we had the land. They said, let us pray. We closed our eyes and when we opened them, we had a Bible and they had the land. Sydney Johnson at the Black Apologetics Ministry writes that the issue of whether or not Christianity is a white man's religion is interesting. One must wonder why this is even an issue for discussion. No one ever asked Buddhism is a white man's religion or if Islam is a black man's religion. It is only Christianity that must face such a test. Jesus was not white because he was born in a region of colour. We also know that Jesus was in Africa, for the Bible says, Out of Egypt I have called my son. We know that an Ethiopian Enoch of great authority accepted him before it became the white man's religion. Today I'm going to be um, comparing indigenous social work systems and legacies. Um, and I'm also going to be comparing it to hip-hop culture to ask the question whether or not hip-hop culture is an indigenous social work system. Um, when I was researching this about being indigenous, there were two things in common that stood out for me. One was a connection to the whenua, to a piece of land, and also the second connection was through whakapapa. On the table here, I have one half of my whakapapa. I'm currently researching the other half at the moment. And I can whakapapa back on my father's grandmother's side um, to Finland. And I can also whakapapa back to this guy they called the Black Viking. So it raises some questions about that, but I won't go there. So anyway, depicted on the cover page stands representatives from the Lakota Republic, a group who have declared themselves independent from the United States. They traveled to Washington called the reassertion of sovereignty about restoring treaty rights. They also do not recognize governments that are tribal or other leaders in the United States. So they want to stand autonomous against the government in the US because they see that the government over there breached the treaty that they had over there. Um, when I researched the Takitaki or origins, it became apparent that like New Zealand, a treaty was agreed to called the Treaty of Fort Lara Mai La in 1851. There was a rush of people trying to dig for gold. If the tribes didn't harm them, they were told that they would get money. It wasn't much, only 50000 over 50 years, so $1,000 a year. The Treaty of Waitangi was signed, and it was about the resources of the land also, and the safety of the settlers in exchange for money. The government breached in two ways. Um, it didn't restrict the people that rushed in for gold, and it also didn't pay out. So, therefore, um, today I will be showing the differences and commonalities between Māori and other indigenous social work framework. These people said that in recognition of our responsibility to protect Mother Earth, Native peoples will not allow this pipeline 
to come across our treaty area. We will defend our lives for Mother Earth. Sound familiar? Mm -hmm. This is some of the whakapapa of hip hop culture in America. Today I'm only going to be speaking about a little bit about African Bambada, the Black mm -hmm. Spades, and DJ Cool Herc. DJ Cool Herc's father was a DJ and he came from Jamaica um, over to America and he set up these block parties where people could come and just dance to good music and all that kind of stuff as an alternative to violence. African Bambada was in a gang called the Black Spades and they were pretty ruthless. I remember a story about the New York street gangs where a group of 12, 13 and 14 year olds attacked another kid in a, um, a park with baseball bats and they beat him to death. This was back in the, the mid 70s. <laughs> Today I'll also be using the, the framework that our group came up with to assess, assess things. So as you can see I've already talked about Papa Papa and connection to the Papa Papa Tipu, which is grounded to the Fenua. So you might ask, how is hip hop culture connected to lands? This guy here is Dondi. He, he was one of the greatest graffiti writers over in New York. He um, had a clear understanding of colonization, and the reason why he distorted the letters. On his, he came up with Wild Style, which was a type of graffiti writing, was an anti-colonial thing because he believed that the English language was a tool of colonization. So he distorted the language on purpose as kind of like an artistic uh, thing. He said, when we talk about that, it's letters written with style. Street from Africa's colonial era shows how imperialists constructed stereotypes to shape and distort Western views. The connection <coughs> to Fenua is Africa. That's the connection to the land. Some of you may have clicked on this, that this looks like a gang patch, you know, an old gang patch. So you can see that hip hop culture became a, a um, substitute or an alternative to gang life. And um, this is Shaka Zulu, and what happened was, African Bambada was watching this movie about uh, Shaka Zulu and, and this movie called Zulu and he seen how the sky united the people together and he wanted to do the same thing in a colonized and oppressed America. The principles that he came up with was peace, unity, love and having fun. This was the framework that he had and he also said that it is about knowledge, wisdom, understanding, justice, equality and all these principles but the most important one that I want to focus today is overcoming the negative to the positive and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, he also focused on education. So you're probably wondering what is the connection between Zulu Nation and Aotearoa? This is the connection. There's all these chapters all around the world in different countries that have come out of the Zulu Nation. This is the tohu or one of the tohu for um, the Aotearoa chapter of the Zulu Nation. You can see that it's taken from the old 10 cent coin. I don't know if you remember that. Um, now, King Kapisi, King Kapisi said, it's just my savage instincts coming back from the brink. Revitalize the knowledge you lost, you better think. Culture, even being lost in ignorance from the ma to the pa to the child. Wonder why your child is running round wild? Pass on the knowledge so the tongue leaves its cradle or lead them back home to the motherland and teach the ways of our elders, lifestyles and speak. So he makes this cultural connection back to his culture, back to Samoa, but he also embraces the hip hop culture. Mm -hmm. This is KRS One. I don't know if you've heard of KRS One, mm -hmm. yes. but um, he lectures in the states on hip hop culture and its links to indigenous. And this is a picture when he actually came to Aotearoa to a marae. He was Paul Levy Don, and he's standing in front of the marae there of the um, 
on the panels there. And he says that hip hop means to know a form of intelligence, to be hip is to up, be up to date, hop is a form of movement. So if you think about that, hip is about being current, it's about having the knowledge, the latest trend, the latest style, to be up on the other person. And hop is like an activating word to do something, to participate in something. Hip is the knowledge, hop is the movement, movement in ancient civilization has been born again. So he's talking about those links to his roots, but at the same time having to reform against this thing called colonization. Iwi have struggled for cultural as well as political sovereignty. Like other marginalized groups, Māori have adopted hip-hop as an outlet for creative expression and social protest in the face of a dominating white culture. If Māori and Pacifica hip-hop is a genuine reaction to and an expression of oppression, critical consciousness is a social concept which involves people being able to be completely aware of their own oppression, reflecting upon their reality, and being able to change the reality for themselves. So you're probably wondering what my connection is. This is Apaha Posse over here. We've got Tekupu, we've got Tekupu, we've got MC Wire. These guys were uh, some of the founding fathers of Aotearoa Hip Hop. This was on the Declaration of Resistance Tour that I was honoured to be a part of. Um, I've got a lot of time for these two guys. These guys are kind of like the Komatsu of New Zealand Hip Hop. That's how I look at it anyway. This is Terry Moana uh, Ripley. Um, she used to stay at my partner's mum's house. And I, was, and I didn't know this, and I was going through these old photos, and then I was like, hey, that's blah, 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 blah. And then they, they just kind of dismissed it. They were like, oh, yeah, her, da, da, da. She used to come around our house like it was nothing. <laughs> this, is, this is African Bambara, and this is the connection again between Aotearoa and the Zulu Nation. Oh. Songs like Behold My Cool Style and Horrified One attack the problems of race by asserting the positive contributions of Māori culture and deconstructing language and images used to represent Māori. So Dem Native became like this positive thing where young Māori could, uh, could see role models and could see themselves in the story um, where they met uh, in Tinkana. So the question needs to be asked, how can I evidence indigenous cultures embracing hip-hop culture whilst keeping their own cultural traditions and principles? At the end of this presentation, I'm going to be showing you a video which contextualizes um, Native American indigenous culture with hip-hop culture and shows how, it, how it's um, fused together. This is um, Mushu Whitefeather. I was honoured to meet him probably about a year ago. He's an indigenous practitioner over in what he calls Tudor Islands. He's worked with his people for over 40 years practicing traditional indigenous medicines in Rumoa. Um, he's also been involved in the, the protests over there, where, uh, I believe, where the, um, the government was oppressing. Uh, the native people, and so he was involved. I don't know if you've seen on the news that lady that um, she fasted for 45 days. That's like his best mate. Um, he, he, so you can see here that um, this is an example of Tinoranga Tiratanga mixed with the indigenous from overseas. There's starting to be a collaboration of, of these things. This is two feathers. This is a symbol of um, from iwi over here and indigenous overseas working together to, to um, collaborate. Two Feathers International Aotearoa New Zealand and Turtle Island says that tribes helping tribes working together to achieve independence, supporting the preservation of indigenous traditions, practices and language for the well-being of all people. <coughs> So, what does indigenous mean? According to Wikipedia, <laughs> people defined in international or national legislation 
as having a specific rights based on their historical times. When I read that, I was like, what rights? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it doesn't make sense. Um, it didn't make sense to me. And then I thought about those two principles, connection to whenua and whakapapa. To me, those, those are more important. Connection to the land appears to be commonly among different indigenous people, and it is sad, therefore, that in my research, seizing of this land appeared to be common as well. Like the Lakota Republic, Zulu Nation links back to Fenua and Africa. Bambara saw that his people living in America and took elements of this and combined them. So, just to do a very, very brief uh, fuck up on this. Um, so, what happened was World War II. World War II. So, uh, the European or the American white soldiers go to war. Uh, the Indigenous go to war, they come back and the white people are allowed to get this funding from the government to buy their own houses. The indigenous uh, that were originally taken as slaves to America don't get the same right, even though they fought for their country. What happens is, is that the rich get rich, the poor get poor, and the ghettos were born. And this set the scene for, for Bambara. This is the tohu for um, the service that I work for, and this is a framework of wellness. So you can see here, it reverts to um, Mason Jury's Tafari Tapa when talking about the areas of, of wellness. And then up the top is the ancestors, that acknowledging of that whakapapa to that person that we're working with. And down here is the connection to the whenua. So there's these principles, whakapapa, whenua, and then these represent the afi that we provide as a service when we, when we walk alongside the people that we work with. So this is an, another indigenous um, framework. Dr. Rangi Marie Rose Perry, as we watched her video yesterday, she talks about the connections to the universe with young people in the middle and then surrounded by aroha and their connections out to different areas of iwi life. And I love this framework because there's a, a, lot, of, a lot of things in this framework that you can, you can utilize. Uh, you know, you can see here, whanaungatana to the iwi to the whakapapa. So again, whakapapa and all these kind of things. Um, So just, just um, backtracking and reviewing again. So the birth of the birth of hip hop culture comes to America and everything's going okay. And then all of a sudden it goes back into this negative space. So it's come from a negative space, gone into a positive space, and then all of a sudden it goes back into this negative space. And I had to ask the question, why is that? Why is that? So, um, if we look at the Vene Ketama, which means different, um, I believe that the culture of hip hop is unique and that the guardians or kaitiaki of this are now aged 60 years old and plus. They are, in a sense, the Komato or elders. Bambara instructed different chapters of the Zulu nation around the world to take the culture back and make it their own. He stated in 2002 that the beats coming from different nationalities or races, that hip hop is colourless and not racist, and to seek truth through roots and culture, discussing about constant preservation of hip hop culture. If hip hop is about negative to positive, this could align to Takipu in the example found in the concept of the MC 